Hello and welcome everyone to another StarCraft 2 England cast. Today I have got a best of one game. It is between Evil Geniuses LZ Gamer, who is the red Zerg in the lower right position, and Liquid Noni, who is the blue Protoss player in the top left. That means that we do have a PVZ Protoss V Zerg, and it is from the Razor Replay Pack of the Week, kindly released by Team Liquid Pro, and it is all of Noni, who is an awesome Protoss player. So seriously guys, check it out, it's really good. Or alternatively, I'm going to cast loads of these games, so, you know, just check back to my channel, subscribe, that sort of thing, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, um, all of that shenanigans. So, what can we expect from these two players? Well, firstly, Noni doing something I did not expect, which is walling off on the high ground. I mean, this map's a Hana. It is such a narrow ramp to the natural. You can go for a forge fast expansion so easily. It's insane. And actually, you can completely wall this off perfectly happily and just be like, yeah, I'm safe, come at me, bro. Because when you take your third, you just knock down these rocks, you wander over here, and then you only have to worry about defending this area, which is smiley face happy. LZ Gamer, obviously, he's going to be going for a 14 or 15 pool. The reason for that is going for a hatch first against Protoss is super risky. Mainly because if they do go forge fast expand, they can just come and cannon you and then you sad face and die basically so you go for a 14 or 15 pool just to be on the safe side um, or alternatively you you go a hatch first this is this is a ballsy move okay basically this is just super risky and considering it is only a best of one and a ladder game this is just like insanely bold like I don't know if there's some reason that there's no way he could possibly know the Noni hasn't gone for that really, really fast expansion, gone for a forge or anything like that. So that is just like literally balls of steel there, LZ Gamer. And I don't recommend that to really anyone on the ladder because basically you have no way of knowing. And if a Protoss player, I cast a game very recently where a Protoss player did come down, see the hatch first and just drop down cannons and won. It was on Entombed Valley and it was beautiful for every Protoss out there and really demonstrated why doing this can just instant lose you against the Protoss player. But um, Noni is going for a really unusual build actually. He's getting that second gas really early. So no intention at all of expanding anytime soon and that basically suggests to me that we're going to see a very very tech heavy play maybe even a one base tech play and of course that that overlord did it come in and scout the gas i don't think it did no no scout off on the gas really just knows there's a one base play and that's going to cause lz really to be really proactive with his scouting and also start thinking how do I defend because he knows he's going to have something coming at him a second gateway added on now and this is just a very very interesting build from Noni it's really unconventional especially on Ohana it's it's almost guaranteed that a Protoss will fast expand here because it's just such an easy ram to hold so again that's probably going to throw LZ off a little bit and Again, we'll wait and see what he does, but I mean, his first, his biggest concern is going to be what kind of one base play is coming at me. And Noni actually now looking like he's going to come and expand off the back of this. This is a really, really peculiar build. Maybe Noni has played LZ before and got cheesed or something like that, but, but who knows? This, this definitely was the only game in the pack, so I don't know if it was part of a bigger series, but I assumed it was from the ladder, but again... Who knows, this is all fairly good play from both these guys so far. I mean, it's really quite unconventional on both sides. But unconventional doesn't necessarily equal bad. It was kind of a two-gate expansion, which is quite interesting. It gets an awful lot of sentries out. And I can't help but feel the follow-up from getting a lot of sentries is to get a robotics facility, pump out two immortals, two or maybe three immortals, and go for an immortal sentry two-base timing push, which is pretty much an all-in, but it's incredibly difficult for Zergs to hold. Now, LZ is coming down to take his expansion. Good time. He knows that his opponent has just chucked down his own natural, so he wants to stay a base up. If you look at the work account, um, Nani is still just ahead, but that's purely because there's so many Zerglings out right now. And, I mean, this is a big flood of Zerglings coming. 28 are on their way up the map, and, I mean, if these sentries aren't super on the ball with the wall off, then it's not going to be fun. So, obviously, those sentries have to be there in like a second now actually it's all fine now because there is a whole command there but in come the force a little bit late 
And I mean, a sentry's gonna go down for sure. There goes down a zealot as well. Now, these zerglings will all get trapped here and they'll engage incredibly cost ineffect ineffectively in such low numbers against that zergling, but they have scouted the Stargate. That is important. No one really likes his Phoenix play. Day9 actually did a daily on his PvP when he did loads of Phoenix back in 2010. Um, so. That's a little bit of interesting fact. Phoenix against Zerg actually really interesting because they're very fast, very mobile, and usually Zerg players don't have that much anti-air. So if you've got say four Phoenix, you can lift a queen, pick it off, and just be laughing. But of course the two Evo chambers are down. We may see some spores thrown down just to be on the safe side there. But I mean, so far just Phoenix. These Zerglings are gonna scout it though, so obviously the Phoenix is now completely aware of what's going on. There goes down the Spore Crawler. No Spore Crawler at the natural yet. Now the other thing about this play is there's an awful lot of Zealots coming in and that's going to really divide up the attention because I mean there's hardly anything on the field to deal with this many Zealots and LZ he could be coming into a little bit of a problem now. That single Phoenix coming in he can basically lift up a Queen and just basically buy these zealots time. There goes down a really good force field. Basically all of these drones are now going to die very very quickly. Those overlords are going to get picked off as well and I mean there's just so many zealots right here right now and um, I mean they've only killed two workers so far and that's because the zealots are just so slow. They need to start engaging these zerglings though otherwise it's going to be big problems. A good engagement angle here just allowing a load of zealots to engage very few, very very small numbers of zerglings and I'm not sure if this is really coming off that well, but only, I mean, once this is all cleaned up, I mean, the units lost could be pretty similar. I mean, a couple more drones getting picked off here, but, I mean, in terms of resources lost, that was very, very equal. Um, I mean, obviously only five workers killed there, which does keep Noni ahead, but, I mean, the third base is out. Once you get three queens up injecting away, then everything goes out absolutely crazy in terms of the Zerg production so we'll wait and see how this plays out. Robotic facility now on its way as well as a forge. The upgrade advantage is going to be there for LZ who has got his 1-1 melee upgrades nearly done. The Spore Crawler is on its way out as well now and we do have two Phoenix and a Voidway. That is going to be really really potent apart from the fact there's a Spore Crawler there. That can get taken down by a Voidway charged I do believe. The Spawning Pool will also completely exposed and that Voidway should be able to engage, but for the moment it looks like he's waiting for another Phoenix to come in, maybe even waiting for the fourth Phoenix, but those Phoenix will not help against the Spore Crawler, so we will wait and see how that all goes. The Phoenix do just need to basically get a lift off exactly in that position, out of the range of the Spore Crawler, and now obviously LZ is going to have some issues, because a fourth Phoenix is about to come in, that single Voidway will pick this off, the Spore Crawler will get focused down very, very easy, I mean once even before it's charged doing huge damage, the overlords getting kicked off, that is just incredibly annoying more than anything else. I mean there's a big pack of overlords here that can get taken down. Two evolution chambers will fall. More spore coolers are coming down and getting built pretty much everywhere and anywhere they can. More phoenix getting add on, but they're not being able to do anything at all so far. I mean, there's just too many spore coolers around. A lot of Zerglings getting pumped up by LZ here. And LZ, I don't know if you know, Zerglings are good units, but they can't shoot or can't bite upwards. Um, Perhaps suggested in a future patch that Zergling should be able to jump really high, but unfortunately I don't think that will be the case. These four quarters are getting picked off, and this is going to be incredibly annoying because, I mean, these Phoenix can just pick off Queen after Queen. So that was a bit of a bad engagement, one Phoenix moving back from the spores there. And I mean, I'm surprised more Phoenix are getting pumped actually because the big thing is they can't do anything about the spore quarters. Yes, they can very, very quickly come and pick off Overlords, but if the Phoenix start falling, that just becomes very, very bad, non cost effective. But LZ is going to be very, very infuriated by this. He's got a Zergling there. I mean, tech-wise, we've got the plus one coming out here. We also have a hell of a load more gateways. And really the Colossite on its way. The Robotic Bay down. Extended Thermal Lance being researched by Noni. LZ, on the other hand, he's got his path infestation put down. Pathogen Down's just started. Rebuilding those Evo Chambers. Um, basically, these Phoenix and Voidway are giving complete map dominance. Those overlords are being forced to go back. These two spores are going to be a pain. If there was a second Voidway, though, that might be a bit easier to deal with. So I'm surprised we haven't seen a second Voidway come out. Because really, this was a big investment. And unless it does an awful lot, it could have some problems. Now, I mean, obviously, you've got to find a way to deal with these spore coolers or at least make these Phoenix do something because all of those spores are down, those Phoenix will just melt. It will be not fun at all. We do have Noni getting ready to take his third base. That's what taking down these rocks 
initiates basically. And I mean, what's surprising is LZ hasn't even bothered with these rocks, and I'm very surprised by that purely because he's got a lot of Zerglings on the field, he just isn't using them for anything, so why not just destroy the rocks? Um, that is a bit beyond me, but who knows, we do have Infestors coming out now, and I mean, once those Infestors pop, these Phoenix are going to be completely immobilised and essentially useless, because Phoenix clump up incredibly badly, and as with all air units, and basically that means one fungal growth can basically ruin Noni's day, and I mean, these the Phoenix are on their way over, and this could be so bad, literally, chain fungals could wreck everything for Noni right now, Lost Tab are coming out a lot worse for LZ, he's also been incredibly annoyed by the fact that he's lost so many overlords, that is just really, really infuriating, but there's so many warp gates, two not actually converted into warp gates yet, that is something you don't want to forget to do, because obviously that's a lot of production, and but here we go, we will see Noni seeing they're going and warping those in, he's getting his third base down, and that means LZ needs to either put on some pressure, or he needs to take his own fourth base, so those are the two options, we do have Noni with a zealot there, just watching one of the fourth base locations, although personally I think taking this one is better, it's easier to defend, a couple of Zerglings just running in, just have a quick look, count on some of the units and really what's coming down, that spire was triggered, of course by the first sighting of a Colossus, because obviously Corruptors are the only solution. That Observer going to be very, very annoying there, and will essentially give Noni all the information he needs. He knows those Investors are down. 2-2 two -two upgrades are nearly finished for those melee units there. That's going to be very, very potent. That's compared to, of course, 0-1 for Noni, so a big upgrade advantage. Plus two Protoss ground weapons are on their way. Chrono Boosts are being shot off on them as well. Spire is not quite done. Still another about 15 seconds left on that. Or 15 were my on about. Now it's 15 seconds. I meant 25. And, I mean, basically, until those Corruptors do pop, these four Colossi are, are going to be absolutely devastating because unless you can deal with them very effectively, Zerglings melt. Like, literally melt. The Infestors are going to be pretty good, but obviously without the Zergling support, they can't do anything. They... You can chain fungal as much as you want, but unless your fungals are limitless and perfect, you're going to lose investors and you're going to lose the game. And it's a big mistake I see a lot of Zerg players make, is they get too many investors and not enough units to support them. Now, out come 10 Corruptors, and Noni, he needs to take this opportunity before those Corruptors pop out, otherwise he could have some problems. Burrow is being used very, very effectively with those investors, and basically we're going to have to see at some point some work done by LZ to defend against this, but I mean, Noni is going to get himself into trouble if he allows too many Corruptors to come out. There is a nice little bit of high ground you can utilize here, a bit of cliff walking. Blink is done as well, so those Stalkers get up, could get up there. Now here we go, we're going to see a big engagement come down here, so let's just sit here and watch this. I mean, how quickly are those few Colossi going to fall down? Well, apparently not quickly enough, a whole load of Infested Terrans come out, that is a hell of a load of them. Uh, I mean, that is just going to melt the Stalkers, and it will buy LZ time. Those Phoenix go down instantly, but I mean, I do still feel that engaged incredibly well for Noni, and he didn't lose the Colossi. That's the most important thing, but the Corruptor count, that's really dwindled down to 7. Not great. These Zerglings could come around for a flank, or alternatively a counter-attack. Both would be good, in my opinion, but I mean, the pressing concern for LZ is basically to deal with this big force, and this is starting to get a bit death ball -y. A absolutely fantastic forward blink there. I mean, some fungal growths do go down, but those investors are low on energy, and all the Zerglings have now melted, and I mean, this is just insanely good, and there's the GG right there. So, that was a pretty quick ending, just a great single move by Nani ended the game. So guys, if you did like the cast, please give the video a thumbs up or a like. Subscribe as well, I get new top level games up every single day of the week. And also leave a cool comment below, um, either about the game, my casting, the players, anything at all. Follow me on Twitter, but most importantly, I really hope you did enjoy the cast, and I hope to see you again. Bye for now.